I said, today we're going to mess about with um, some gesso and texture and um, just have a bit of fun with trying to create some different, different effects um, with the watercolor or if you're going to use acrylics, then you can do acrylics as well, but maybe slightly watery. Um, just to add a bit more interest into the painting so it's not too um, laboured. So what I'm going to be using is, um, I've just got some tissue paper. It's not actually tissue paper, well it is tissue paper, but it's, um, I think it's out of some packaging. So I'm just recycling that. And what I'm going to be doing is scrunching that up. Okay. If you don't have this, and you don't have the gesso, then probably what you're going to want to try and do is run and get some, or if you've got some, some clean film. Okay, and I'll show you both ways how we can actually do this. Um, the clean film way is not 100% the same, but you can get a similar effect with it. And I'll show you that in a second. So while you're getting your materials, I'll just talk you through what we're gonna do with them. Um, so with your tissue paper, what you're gonna to wanna to do is take a nice big piece of tissue paper. It doesn't have to be one piece. You can break it up into different pieces if you want to. Will I'll kitchen roll be okay? Uh, you can use kitchen mites, a little bit absorbent, but yeah, it should be okay. I think we did this one, similar one to this before, Maria. Oh, Linda, sorry, in class. So yeah, tissue paper should, should be okay. So you're gonna to wanna to scrunch it all up like this. So you get a really good load of creases and um, uh, different folds and so on within the paper. Okay, that's really what you want. So it's not smooth. Okay, you want it all nice and rough and bumpy like that, okay? So if you're gonna do the, so while you're doing that, I'm just gonna talk you through the clean fill one. So anybody that hasn't got the, um, the tissue paper and the gesso can do the clean film. So with the clean film, what you're gonna to wanna to do is wet your paper. So where I do the gesso and the, um, the tissue paper, you're gonna do it as a, um, um, a big wet area and then you're gonna stick your clean film onto the wet area, not with paint, but just with water. Okay, so you put the clean film down just onto water. Once the clean film's down onto water, you're then gonna use a pipette or a brush and then you're gonna tip the, and I'll do this as a little thing while we're waiting for the, the clean film, sorry, the gesso to dry. You're gonna tip your paint into the edge of the clean film and let it run down it. Okay, so you get all of these effects, but I'll show you that one as we kind of go along. Right, so let's make a start then, otherwise it's gonna take forever to dry this. So as I said, you take your tissue paper, scrunch it up. Right, so put that to one side for a second. Then you're gonna to wanna to take your, um, your gesso. So hopefully everybody understands or knows what gesso is. So gesso is just a um, acrylic primer, normally used for um, priming canvases and uh, such like for acrylic or oil painting. But we can use it with, with this type of thing as well. So I'm gonna take a palette knife. If you don't have a palette knife, you can just take a big brush or whatever you want, it doesn't really matter. Um, Stuart, sorry, can you yep. use um, acrylic if you haven't got gesso? You could just what use white acrylic paint. Yeah, yeah that do the okay. same job. Yeah. Or you can even use PVA if you don't have. Oh, okay. If you don't, if you don't have right. either of those two things, you could right. just right. stick it down with PVA. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to take some of our um, gesso, and I'm going to start to put it onto my tissue paper, like this. Okay, and kind of start to spread it around a little bit. So obviously this is going to be the, the back of it once we stick it down, not the front, obviously. So it's just liberally put some gesso on. And this is probably why my mum was putting on her gloves <laughs> to uh, stop herself getting covered in all this. And you need to put a reasonable amount on, otherwise it's not gonna stick. But I warn you, the more you put on, the longer it takes to dry. So um, just bear that in mind. So I'm just gonna stick a bit more up there, all the way through the middle. And I may need to put some more little pieces on as well. Um, if this piece isn't big enough, kind of give me the shape that I want with the, um, the rocks, but this would be good to start with. 
So I'm going to turn that over now. And thinking about the way that I want the rocks to kind of go, I'm going to stick it, we'll start to stick it down onto my um, watercolour paper. Now, if you've got enough of the gesso underneath, you can actually start to scrunch and make different formations within the, the tissue paper to give you the, the sort of direction that you want the cracks or the crags or the, the, um, <clears throat> the different fascias of the rock to kind of go. So just have a, just spend a little bit of time playing around with it. Obviously you don't want to flatten it out too much because then you lose all the nice, the, um, the nice folds, but you want to make sure it's good and stuck down. Good and stuck down, that's good English, isn't it? Um, well stuck down. Now I'm going to take um, some scissors and I'm just going to cut away. This might be a bit too straight and edge, so I might have to jagged it up a bit once we come back into it. And I'm not really trying to be too careful with this because I want it to be a bit um, lumpy and bumpy and kind of a rockish like. So we'll have to stick that edge down afterwards. And I'm going to cut off the excess from this side. I don't need this because obviously it's outside our paper edge. Oops. Stuart, so do we leave the tissue paper on? Yes, we're going to leave the tissue paper on, Jackie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're not taking it off. It won't come off anyway once the gesso's dried. Okay. Thank It'll you. be stuck. <clears throat> so we get rid of that. We don't need that. Okay. Now, any areas where obviously you've got um, paper and it's not kind of stuck down like here where I haven't got enough gesso underneath. I'm just going to put some little bit of gesso on the end of my palette knife or brush, whatever you're using, and I'm just going to slide it under just so that I've got something for the tissue paper to stick to. And I'm sure you all know how to do this um, fairly well. So just make sure it's well stuck down. Otherwise, we'll um, once you start painting, it will come up. So let's just stick all that down. A bit more over here. Okay. Now the bottom edge, we need to stick that down a bit better. So I need more just so one down here. And what I'm going to do while this is drying, because it will take a little while to dry, um, I will do a little demonstration of the, the clean film. Um, way of doing this. So let's just cake a bit of that on there. So the other thing I'm trying not to do is get too much gesso on the front on the tissue itself. It's all just going on the back <coughs> for this for this particular um, painting. It doesn't really matter if you get a little bit on the front, but you don't want too much because we want the absorbency of the paper to react with the um, the paint when we start to put that on. And obviously if you put too much gesso on the front, it won't, it won't give us the desired effect. So just be a little bit careful about how you, I know we're kind of sloshing the gesso around, but just try not to get it too much on the front. <clears throat> okay, so that's stuck, stuck down. Let's do this bit over here. It's a little bit blue peterish, unfortunately, this is. I <laughs> should have done one earlier to show you and been a bit quicker, but I'm sure you're all having a go if you are doing it. So um, it doesn't matter too much. <clears throat> so let's just finish that off down in the corner. Now, needless to say, well, I didn't really talk about the actual composition. Um, if you really want to try and make this a proper painting and you want to make it as accurate or you want to try and think about where you place this within the, the larger spectrum of the paper rather than just do what I did and sort of just slop it on. Um, you want to think a little bit more about where those rocks are actually going to sit or conversely what's actually going to go on at the top up here. Now luckily 
I'm going to have a little bit of mountain or something in the distance and maybe some trees kind of in front of that before we get to the rocks. So that that gap there should be OK for me to be able to do that. in. if you put your rocks, the tissue paper higher up, it leaves you a lot less room to play with at the top for any sort of um, trees or mountains or whatever you want to paint up there. OK, so just think about where you want um, uh, the you know, the background to kind of interact with the, um, the texture itself. And that's one of, the, one of the things that you have to be very, very careful of with these techniques is the technique in itself only really works when it works with everything else. You can't really hang a painting just on the technique. Um, well, you can, but off, more often than not, it just becomes about the creases and the folds and not really about the whole image as, as one. So really the technique should support the image rather than just be the only thing within the picture. Um, so you wanna try and make sure it all links together. So good, right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that to one side for the moment. Hopefully you can all, you don't need that on screen to be able to do it. You should, should be able to copy that if you want to have a go at that one. So I'm gonna put that away and then I will have a go or show you how um, we can do the, uh, clean film way. So I'm going to get some right, clean film. I've been actually saving all my packaging material that comes from anything from Amazon or wherever. I just reuse it all rather than start a new load of uh, clean film. So I'm going to take some some of this packaging cellophane. It's exactly the same as clean film. There's not really any difference. Um, it's the stuff that comes around, um, I don't know, boxes and that such like. So what you're going to want to do is, if I can get a separate piece off, ideally you want just one thin sheet of it. And if it was clean film you're using, the actual food wrapping stuff, then you won't have a problem with this because it's um, it already comes in just one sheet. So you want to stretch it out and make sure it's flat. Uh, I think there's two pieces there. Let me just peel that off. Nah, that should be okay. Okay, so you're going to peel it out. I might need two pieces for this because it's quite wide. Um, there's another one there. And maybe one more. Obviously, if you're using um, a whole sheet, then you won't need to worry about this. You can just um, you can just lay a whole sheet of clean film over and then and then sort it out. Actually, that would be enough. It's just to show you how it works. Right, so you need a big brush. So taking a big, I'm going to use a mop brush here, ideally with clean water. Where's my big brush? Oh, there it is. So I'm taking some, um, just a big, a big mop brush. So this one's just a goat hair one and some water. And let's get rid of those bits we don't need. <clears throat> and what you want to do, let's just move that to the side, is again consider where you want the rock formation to, to actually come. So if you want to even draw it out, you can do. Then you're going to want to wet the area where the rocks are going to go. Not the top section, just where the rocks are. So just with clean water, so I'm going to slosh this on. like so, all the way to the bottom. So leaving this top area dry, because obviously that's where my um, painted elements are gonna come. So this is really just where the, you want that rocky kind of cragginess to, um, to exist. So then I'm gonna take my clean film, let's just fold that one back a bit. And again, thinking about the, the way you want it to lay, Oops, I'm just flown away. And you see, you don't really need to press very hard to get it to stick to the clean, uh, to the wet area. So let's have one going. I might need some more of this actually. Let's have another one going like so. Stick that down. And then we need one more piece. Let's tear that in half.
We'll have another bit over here, like that. And maybe one more. So this one, this method doesn't require any, any um, gesso. Let's just re wet that's got a bit dry. Bit that down. And obviously this top edge, you want to kind of replicate a little bit the, the feeling of the, the rock formation. So I'm just dropping in a little bit more water because it's just dried out a touch. Sure. What do you actually use gesso for? What do you use it for? Yeah. So gesso is a primer. So it's actually what we use normally to um, protect or to coat the surfaces of like canvas or um, to protect the actual material that's underneath. So it's, it's kind of a, um, a binder that stops the material, say the canvas material being eaten by the um, the paint that you put on top of it. Right, okay, thank okay. you. Right. So now <laughs> taking um, a pipette or you can use a, um, a any kind of brush. So I'm gonna just do this with red because I've got a load of red here in my um, in my little jar. Then you wanna start off at the top up here. And the object is, is to let the paint creep down into the cracks of the, um, the gesso, uh, sorry, the, um, the clean film that you've just put on. You don't want to force it, but you see how it then starts to create these little striations and interesting um, patterns within the, um, the clean film. So just take your time. And obviously you can't really play with this too much once you've done it. You don't wanna be lifting it. If you lift up the clean film, then the whole thing will just disappear. So you need to just put it on and, and leave it. Um, you can add different colors if you want to. So you can add multiple colors and get different kind of things happening. Um, and you need to be patient as well, because sometimes you don't get anything happening and it's only after a while then the, um, the paint will spread into those areas. Okay, and then maybe a little bit more than that. Put a bit in that one because I didn't have any in it. You can have red rocks, interesting load that one up a bit more. And obviously, as I said, you could put multiple colors into this if you really want to. Um, okay, let's try and uh, see how that's looking. We can mop that up on the edge because it's all dripping everywhere. Let's put some other colors in there. So let's use some. Um, oh, I've got a nice yellow. Let's try some of that. Stuart, are we meant to be doing this as well? With you don't have to. No, this was really just for the people that don't have. Okay. The. Yeah. Um, the gesso really, but if you want to have a go at this as a little play, then you can do it as a side, a side sample, um, as a different way of actually achieving a similar, yeah, okay. a similar thing. So I'm just putting a little bit of this yellow on as well, just to kind of add a bit more um, color. Okay. Down there, perhaps. Stuart, is that watercolor or inks? Uh, they're all watercolor at the moment, but you could use ink. Right. Ink would okay. just as well. Anything that's sort of runny, you know, very runny. Like Sorry. <laughs> okay, right. I'm going to leave that one to one side then, and then we'll have a look at that 
And as I said, you can't, once you've done this, I know the temptation is to actually have a look and see what you've ended up with and um, see what you've got. But really, you just have to put it to one side and leave it alone. Um, forget about it because it's it will just wreck it if you try and peel up that that um, clean film. It will really just wreck it. So you just have to leave it leave it to one side and just let it do its thing. Um, Okay, so let's just do that. I'm going to put that to one side. Seems to have squashed in everywhere over here today. So let's go back to our other one. I might need to dry this a little bit. So now you can do this with pencil if you want to, um, just to sort of plot it out. So I'm just going to grab myself uh, a pencil if I can find one. There's one. And then just very lightly, we don't want to, we don't want a very detailed drawing here. It's just a kind of a plan of where you're going to go with the um, the washes. So um, I think I'm going to have a little bit of a distant hill line, so perhaps a tiny bit of sky, um, maybe a little bit of a, a misty hill, perhaps in the background, just poking its head through. Kind of. Now what I don't want to do is replicate this shape too much. So um, we'll just kind of do something, perhaps bring it down there a little bit more, something like that, just as a hill line. And then we're gonna have maybe a very, very misty area through, through here, which is gonna be a wet and wet wash. And then we're gonna to start to have our trees. So they'll come from the base of, the base of the trees are going to come from the rocks. So I'm going to take that one right up and out. I'm just going to do them as straight lines because obviously we're going to we're going to pull them out into ferns afterwards. Um, we can perhaps have another one pointing slightly the other way, where we actually get to see the top of it. Maybe a smaller one in there. Um, a very small one there, and maybe another one. Let's try not to space them exactly the same. Let's go a bit wider. Just poking its head into the scene, perhaps a big one there. Okay, so these lines indicate where the trees are going to kind of come. This is sort of a very soft, washy area. This is our mountains, and then we've got a tiny little bit of sky. So I'll let you just do that quickly. If you are doing, let me move these out of the way. <clears throat> so let's mix up some colours. Uh, just have a quick tidy up because we've got in the right mess here this morning. A spray bottle. Looking at this, I think I want to have another another row of misty mountains. So I'm going to have another little another little hill line just in here, just to break it up a bit more. Something like that. Okay, <clears throat> colour wise, then find a brush. So I want the sky fairly light. <clears throat> And then I'm going to come into the mountains. They're going to be sort of a bluish, bluey, purpley kind of a colour. Um, and then we're going to fade it in, perhaps slightly darker through the middle. And then we're going to get try and get lighter, maybe lighter or darker at the bottom. I'm not quite sure yet. Undecided. But we'll see how we go. So let's mix up some. Um, let's take a brush. Cerulean. So cerulean blue, some of that. Let's just spray this. If I maybe if I put this my palette next to, I don't know if that will show up. 
Let's try it. Might be a bit too tilted. Just so you can see the colours that I'm mixing to start off with. Hopefully you can see that sort of okay. Might need to move it if we start tilting the board. But so this is my cerulean blue. So plenty of plenty of cerulean blue. So just in one one of the troughs. Just flatten out a bit more. Just mixing up a good quantity of that. A bit more water. Okay, then I'm going to have some, um, I think kind of a light red, like a reddy brown kind of colour, I think. Sort of an earthy brown colour. I can mix in with the blue as we kind of go along. It's a bit too orange. So just a bit more of that lighter brown. Again, mix up a, a reasonable amount. A bit more of that. Bit more water. Much more. Okay, and then one more. I think one more colour. I think we'll go with some. Um, I've got an indigo here. I don't really use indigo very often, but I think I'm going to give it a go, just to give it a try. Stuart, did, what, what yellow did you use? I must have missed that. Well, here. The yellow at the bottom. Oh, ignore that one. That was just from an oh, earlier okay. mix. Um, so that's some indigo. Let's give that a quick slush round. It's quite a deep, or a very deep blue, nighttime type blue. Stuart, what would you use instead of indigo? Uh, Payne's grey, or you could use oh, yeah. um, uh, black, or a bit of phthalo blue and brown. No, no, I've got something other, that's good, thank yeah, you. Yeah, Payne's grey will work, yeah. So let's just mix that up um, quite nicely there. Okay, so one, two, three colours. So that's mainly for my up here type area is what I'm looking at first of all. I might dip into some others as we go along, but that's going to get us started. So is everybody ready for me to um, start putting some colour on? Let me just dry that actually very quickly because it's a bit wet. Okay, big brush. Can't believe all my water is dirty already. <laughs> I've just cleaned it. Right, so I'm going to wet um so i'm thinking that i want a light band right at the very very top here so i'm actually going to come just in from the edge of the paper and put a band of water just across the top of the mountains or the distant mountains like so just to give me um, a very soft area in there taking my um, brush to get some paint on it I'm going to dip into some of the cerulean and dip into some of the brown at the same time. So we've got blue and the orangey brown in my brush. And I'm going to come in from the side and across just as one stroke. And we'll just let that run. So the key here is zero playing. Now you see how it's separating quite nicely there, which is what I want. So I'm going to take my big brush again and just soften off this top edge so it disappears to nothing. And there we go, that's my sky. Easy peasy. So one stroke. That's the epitome of um, watercolour, is not to play with it. Got to leave it alone. 
Okay, so I'm just going to give that a moment or two just to um, finish off creeping down before this bottom edge is dried. So I can actually turn it around the other way and start to uh, progress the, um, the mountain. It's just taking off the excess water from this top edge. Right, let's spin it around. Now, hopefully there's still enough moisture in this bottom edge that I can start to progress the, um, uh, the mountain down. Just cleaning off my brush. Got a lot of, um, lot of paint still in it. Take a bit more water. And just at the bottom edge of that area that I've just dropped in the water, I'm just re-wetting, just re-wetting it so I can coax the color down a bit more. So we'll just pull that down a little bit lower. Just a little bit more. My paint is, my clean water is now blue. Okay, so let's dip into some more of the cerulean. And I want it a bit stronger now, because remember we're going into, back into a wash. So I need the color to be a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna bring this up into the base of that mountainy area just to give the feeling that we have got a mountain up there just looking to see where my oh i've gone a bit too far over there never mind leave it a bit lighter in the middle there i think okay that's fine so you need a nice light touch for this don't be too heavy handed. Cleaning my brush again, just mop that line up. Just wash that away so that we don't end up with a line there. Take it all the way down to my rocks. I've just got some gesso on my brush, that's not good. Clean that off. Okay, now let's go and dip into a bit more of the brown. So let's run this now through this middle section. Put a little bit of blue in it as well. Um, Stuart, did you wash, did you uh, wet the paper first before you put that on? Yes. Yes, okay. I'm just dropping a bit of blue into that a little bit of land. It was supposed to be a mountain, but it's kind of turned into a big field now. <laughs> Never mind. I'll just roll with it. Okay, and we'll just let that creep down a little bit more before I start to put any darks on. And obviously where it's hitting the rocks or this tissue paper, I'm just going to wet the area just to so the edge just starts to creep into it. Just give that a moment or two just to um, settle. So I'm just looking at the paper to see how shiny it is. Just gonna mop up the excess. Just so I don't get too much run back when I start to do the trees. Okay. Might also just try and lift out a little bit of colour. I don't know if it's going to work. It might be too dry now. Just up behind this hill line, mountain line, just to pick that out. There we go. That's not too bad. Might get covered with the trees anyway. So just so we can see the mountain up there. Okay.
Right, so I need to now spin the board back round again, so it's upside down. So I'm just looking to see how shiny it all is now. So it's starting to go a little bit matte, so we should be okay to um, start to put some darks on. Not heavy darks. I want them just to creep up and um, mix with what I've already got on here at the base of the trees. And then we're going to pull the trees out of these darks. So I'm going to touch. Yeah. Can you yeah. just show me your picture? I can't see any mountains. There aren't any mountains. I made it up. Oh, oh I see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I said at the beginning, I was just going to make it up, you know. Some oh, mountains. sorry. I missed that. Bit. Okay. Yeah. So just dropping in these nice darks just at the edge of the, the cliff and I'm just going to let them creep up. These aren't the main trees, but they're just they're just kind of um, some darks at the bottom just to um, give us a little bit of foreground, which I can bring the big trees into. So just running it along this wet edge. Perhaps a little bit more in there. We went along the edge. And this is just using the um, the indigo here. As I said, you can use the Payne's Gray if you want to. Um, do a similar kind of thing. Quite like the way that's all interacting there. So we'll leave that to just do its do its thing. Right. Now give that a little tip just to get some of those areas to go a little bit taller. Okay, that's enough. Now, I'm gonna take a cocktail stick, or if you don't have a cocktail stick, you probably use a palette knife. So just um, standard cocktail sticks, nothing special. And I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of a peak on these wet trees, just to give them a bit more height. Um, just like so. And then start to pull out the edges a little bit. Just to give it some shape. Not really trying to make individual fronds. I just want to give it a very soft, a soft shake to make it feel like a, um, a fir tree or whatever you call it, a conifer. <clears throat> okay, let's turn it back around the other way. So that we don't get all those fronds going up. I want them to come down a little bit. Pull it out a little bit more there. A few more there. Break up this in the middle here, it's a bit heavy. Okay, right, leave that alone. I'm not gonna play with that anymore. So I need to leave that to, um, <laughs> I know I said I was gonna have a lot more trees than that, but that one's kind of, we'll let that dry and see how light it goes. And then maybe we'll bring some dark trees over the top. That might be the way to do it. So I'm actually gonna dry this off now. I'll give you time to catch up. Uh, let's just give this a little blast. You might want to have a go at this yourself, just on a separate piece of paper, just to practice how to do these trees. Because obviously, when you do it on your um, on your main painting, you don't want to be fiddling around trying to figure out how to paint them. So, I'm going to take um, my cocktail stick, or you don't have to use cocktail stick. You could use a palette knife, like I said. 
Um, so either a palette knife, you could use a cocktail stick, you could use even a piece of card or a piece of tissue. This is just a piece of sandpaper. Anything that's got a straight, a nice straight edge is really what you want to start off with. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it into, let's just try this paper method. So the sandpaper. So I'm dipping it into the paint. And then think about the direction that you want the um, to go and then drag it down or just touch it to the paper. Once you've done that, you then want to dip your paintbrush before obviously that dries. So I'm using my rigger here. And then I'm going to start to just touch into that line to give me the shape or start to give me the shape of my fir trees. Okay, so you want to give them a little bit of a curl. So you want the, um, the end of the, the stroke to be curling upwards. And then as you're coming down, it just gets bigger and you can add more paint. And then you can make the strokes a lot, lot, um, a lot stronger. Okay, so I'll do that one more time so you can see it. So you're going to touch. Let's do it with this cocktail stick just to give you a, a different way of doing it. So I'm going to dunk the cocktail stick into the paint. Let's put that to one side a second. I'm going to put this, obviously thinking about the direction that you want the, um, the tree to go, and then I just print it and then lift off. Take my rigger, so it's a nice pointy edge, coming down a little bit from the, the end of the um, that initial printed mark, and then just pull out from the center each time. All the way down, all the way down, getting bigger as we come down the, down the tree until you get to the bottom, and then it can be really big. Okay, so that's our Christ well, Christmassy type tree shapes. Okay, so I'll put that to one side and then we'll have a go at that on our main painting. <clears throat> so let's use the paper. So I'm going to have a, a big tree coming in sort of at this angle on my one. Let's just tilt this down a little bit more. So I want a nice straight top. So coming in from outside the picture, straight down, get my rigger, and then start to pull out from that um, initial, initial line. There we go, all the way down. Try and keep it fairly random. You want to get wider as you sort of come down down the tree, That's it. all the way down. And then we're into the, the base area. And you want to do this on dry paper. Don't try doing this on anything that's wet because you'll just lose the shape quicker than anything. So it has to be done on, on, um, on dry paper. And there we go, there's a nice big, a nice big fern. Let's do one more smaller one. Let's do it with a cocktail, just as a slightly different method. So we'll maybe have a smaller one just overlapping this tree, just about, we wanna make it the same size as the other one, just about there. Oops, just drop my cocktail stick. And again, coming out from the center, <clears throat> nice and strong. So you want your paint to be fairly strong so that you can overlap the, um, the existing colors that you've got there, all the way down till we get to the rocks. <clears throat> there we go. Perhaps I might just come out a little bit more there. Try not to fiddle with it, don't fiddle. <laughs> Okay, so let's let you catch up on that. Have a few goes of that. I'm going to put the kettle on.
and then um, we'll dry that off and then we'll start to get into this nice big rocky area after that. Any questions? I'm going to take my clean water and a clean brush and I'm just going to lightly start to put some water through this tissued, tissued area and just let it run wherever it wants to run. So you need to have the angle of the board tilted towards you and not away from you, otherwise it will run up into the trees, which is not what we want. So just putting on some water and just let it run across the surface of the um, tissue paper. Try not to control it too much, just let it do whatever it wants to do. There we go. And then I'm going to start off with my light colours first over this um, tissued area. So the first colour then, let's go with some um, uh, light blue. So pretty much the same colours we've used in the sky really. Perhaps with a, a slight more. Sorry Stuart, did you wet the whole of the tissue paper or just the top part? Mainly the top and let it kind of okay. run or run down. As we sort of come down, we may add a bit more water, but to start okay, off, just let you. it run down, okay? So yeah. taking my blue, the cerulean blue, starting off up the top here, I'm just going to start to drop this now into that rocked or the, the tissue papered area so that it can start to run down where we've wet the, um, uh, the paper. And if it doesn't go far enough, then you can always add a bit more water or you could spray it is another way. Um, I'm actually going to leave a little bit of the paper white just up here in a few spots just to indicate um, just a little change in surface or perhaps there's a little bit of snow or something just um, poking its head through. In fact, I'm going to get my spray bottle. I'm just going to coax that, coax it down a little bit. it to run a bit more. I'm just using my hand to cover the, um, the top section so that I don't get spray into that. A bit more of this blue. And then we'll start to run some of the orangey red colours into this in a moment. Okay, so let's have some oranges now. So exactly the same colours we used in the sky. So this sort of um, brown, orangey brown type colour. And then we'll start to just drop some of this in in among these blues. Just break it up a little bit. And then I'm going to then start to dip into some of the very dark indigo for the bottom section and a bit of the a bit of the um, the orange brown together. So it's the indigo and the orange brown together, just to start to give me a few more darker notes. Here and there. Mm. 
the on-prem. Gonna give that a little spray in a moment, just to get that to run a bit more at the bottom. Just give that a few minutes just to uh, do whatever it's going to do. Just mop up the excess. Quite a lot of moisture now in that tissue. Okay, and then I'm going to get my pet. Got some yellow actually in this. Just some, um, uh, yeah, just like a transparent yellow. I'm just going to put a few notes of this in as well. Just to brighten some of these areas up. So obviously where it hits the blue, it's gonna go a nice greeny color. Add a quite a nice variation to the, to the colors we've got on here already. So this could be like moss or, you know, those sort of, it's a green that you often get on rocky formations. Okay, we'll just let that do what it's going to do for the moment. Mop up the excess again. Okay, now I'm not going to dry that too much just yet because I think it's going to push the paint around. So I'm just going to lay it flat and just let it um, dry off a little bit more on its own before I hair dry it. Okay, looking at it from a bit of a distance, I think I need some more dark to the bottom. I'm actually going to put a few more dark colours. So the indigo with a bit of brown. And mix those two together. So just like a, a burnt umber or a raw umber, whatever you've got. Just mixing that in with the indigo. And just bring some nice strong, strong darks at the bottom here.
Leave that alone now then. Let that sort itself out. I think I might just run a little bit of water through it as well at the top just using my pipette just a bit of, with a bit of water in it just to pull back a little bit of light into some of these areas So I need to hair dry this off now from mm -hmm. Mark to um, add a few more details up here at the top, maybe a few rocks or um, some shape to the top of this cliff area. So bringing some nice dark, Ew. nice dark marks maybe to indicate some boulders or some, um, I don't know, just some shapes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, who was that? It was Claire. <laughs> oh, you're right. What was pleasing? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> a few dark marks there. Put a couple over here. <clears throat> Just to break the edge up, not play with it too much. Jaggedy shapes, <clears throat> maybe the odd vertical here and there. Perhaps we could indicate a little bit more the center of these ferns. A few dark spots in there, Maybe doodads, uh -huh. Uh -huh. a few doodads, it's just a few more dark. Okay, and that's probably about enough. <laughs>